do my personal daughter state, my mom is, I think I would say Delta Igbo. My dad's an Urubu. I'm a part-time chef. I'm a part-time chef. Um, obviously, people know I'm an influencer. Um, then I also do, I also do some school runs activities. Like, I won't go into detail, but I do some school activities. So that was the first thing that get, kept me going. After one day, when I graduated from school, I was like, okay, I can't just sit at home and doing nothing. And most of the job that were coming from me was not like, I can't do this kind of I'm getting paid 50,000. How do I save up? How do I meet, make an ends meet? Okay, let me just continue with what I do in school, help people do some, some things, run errands for people, and rest of So that was how I picked up. So I think that's good. But, but most of, some of, most of my source of income comes from my school activities. Then I have an influencing job I do, then obviously some brands that are working with me now. So. My inspiration comes from, I tell you, my inspiration comes from different things. I get inspired from, from different, by different things, from nature, my parents, my mom especially is my first source of inspiration. She's been there for me through the canteen. Then I have my sisters, my family, and some of my close friends. Then I can get, uh, my inspiration comes from every other place, like animals, nature. Nature inspires me a lot. I can watch animals for hours. I can just imitate what they do. And be like, oh, if this, if this person can survive this kind of thing, I think I can apply to some things in life and just go from there. That it. Then my aspirations, well, I think, um, well, just to make money, live a good life, influence people to do the right thing, because there are very few people who are like living the life right now that is supposed to be like people are breaking away from culture to like fit into so many things in terms of societal norms and the rest of them. So that's just my aspiration to in life. If anything comes up from there, we'll go with the flow. Mm -hmm. That's it. I'm a freelance influencer. My freelance influencer. I don't, first of all, I don't think I do my influencing as a part of a job. I think most influencers out there now, they think that influence is a big job for them. They have to do some kind of things. I have to follow their, I have made a mark for myself. So I have to put in so much work and so much pressure to go to the But I don't think that I'm not like, okay, this is what I do normal. If for what if I can say something on offline, why can't I even bring myself online and play? So why would I fix it online to be like, oh, I want to please my followers. My followers have to be there. They have to see, oh, Daniel is doing this thing right now. So he, he has to, sometimes I get this comment, you're an influencer now, so you have to like rebrand yourself. If most people call, talk to me, people I know, uh, you're not an influencer now. People are not knowing you rebrand yourself, going to comedy, going to this. I'm like, no, I didn't come to Twitter. My aim was not coming to Twitter to be an influencer, right? I came to Twitter to like, I want to express my opinion because bloggers do the most. They take something, they milk it and twist your brain. I'm like, oh, this person said this thing. Oh, this person idiot. You just start hating this man for no reason. Meanwhile, they've removed the main content of what the person trying to say. Mm -hmm. Just like headline rubbish. People, they've done it to me so many times. Okay. My influencing started from Facebook. Right here, Facebook because when I was in Facebook, I think started from doing the early times of BP Niger, doing the Paper Dem season or something like that. And I was like a big fan of Messi AK. So at the first time, I was like, oh, what is going on? I saw some housemates popping. I was like, oh, people were popping, like Tasha, for instance. Tasha was popping, and people were like, oh, this girl, this is all this, and she's all that. I was like, oh, Tasha, I was like, okay, let me go and see why people are hating on her, why people are still for it. Like, I was like, oh, what are people seeing in this? Girl, so I came out, I saw that she was like a rude housemate. No offense to anyone if you are watching this. I saw that she was like a rude housemate. I was like, ah, why are people like, are you, are you blind? Is something wrong with them? So they stay coming for Messi, and because Messi was the it girl at that show. So like, everyone wanted to mingle with Messi. So I was like, okay, why are these people on Messi? I said, sometimes I would, I would defend Messi. She's, she's trying to like, she's not trying to fake it to like get attention or something. And their fans tight and so my god, they came for me. They made my account go and ban. Facebook could not suspend my account because I was trying not breaking the rules. And Facebook wants engagement, which I was what I was giving to them. They couldn't break the, uh, they couldn't suspend my account. Yaba left himself was like, okay, he was there. Because my my influence there from Yaba left and Jesse would most most people from Twitter know. So I was like, okay, they came for me. I was like, oh, I was like at a point, I was like. This is not what I want to do in my life. Come on, defending people that don't even know I exist, people that don't even know their real life outside social media. Because so at the time I started noticing that people were, were faking it online to like get to bring out this kind of persona, yeah, this kind of personality online. But behind the scenes, that like, oh my god, if you see the most of them online, you'll be like, oh my god. So when I came to Facebook, I was popping, I was so, you know, so many blogs, um, people were like saying all kind of things. Then during the kind of the COVID, I said, okay, this is the time for me to reflect on myself and like reevaluate myself. There's something wrong with me. This is not how. This I, I I found myself losing my identity, losing myself to people to please, not like necessarily please people, but in a way to please people because these things draw you in if you don't take time. I took time just to take a break, and I think some people were like having that controversy that I left because I left it, they give you one, I didn't win it, so I get upset. 
So I came to face, I came to Twitter, and I, when I came to Twitter, I was like, okay, something's happening here. Oh, I came the first time, I stayed there for like one week, I don't understand what was going on here. The platform was just somehow, I went back to Facebook, I said, no, then I, I put it on my Facebook, I'm going to take a two months break. So see you guys in two months. So people were like, something's wrong with you. Are you okay? Stay safe. A different kind of prayers. I was like, this put on me. I was sick or something. So I came to Twitter. So when I came to Twitter, I was like, okay, let me just be myself here. There's no need trying to like please people. And I said doing things I was doing, like these are things I, I can say when I'm in front of someone, like, ah, this is your dress, I don't like it. It doesn't make sense. Your books are too expensive. So when I keep saying those people are like, oh he's just trying to like go with this kind of trend and trying at the end of it I created a niche for myself, but that was not the idea I had, I was just here to do my thing, express myself and just engage on Twitter, I think they are reasonable or interesting or something that can be debatable and I leave. Um, when it comes to influencing, everyone has what works for them. There are people who influence with their body, I'm not going to lie about, uh, about that. There are people who influence with their body, there are people who, infl uh, who get their engagement by causing chaos online. Right? There are people who, there are people who really work to become an influencer. So they are doing everything possible to maintain that integrity as an influencer and I see when I see people being like uh, calling me influencer sometimes I feel like I'm not an influencer I'm just like one of the regular Twitter who just got um, publicity doing what I do so what distinguishes me from other influencers I think is my originality because most influencers are not authentic I won't call names but you can see that most of them are not authentic they come out online when, since they've made the fame or made the um, publicity you can't approach them you can't when you see when you see them talk to their followers they talk to their followers like oh you're literally garbage i don't you don't you don't have what it takes to speak to me they overrate them they're forgetting how they started now they forgot that the people you are disrespecting those small accounts are actually people that are giving the publicity without them you are nothing even the celebrities themselves without them you are nothing just like politicians without voters you are, you are nobody so all these influencers most of the influencers out there they lose their originality because they're trying to or trying, they're trying to push their brand by all costs. You see them doing all kinds of things, faking their lives online, coming online, flaunting cars, flaunting pictures, vacation, right? Most of them don't have a dime to back up this thing. If you guys are seeing most of them tomorrow, you hear if EFC packed this one up, doing two for you. Ah, it's not this kids make an influencer. And you'll be like, oh, I talked them before, no one they buy, we run kind of thing. That's that what happened. So I think what distinguishes me from other influencers is just that I'm just there, or an idea. If you hype me, fine. If I do my influencing power tomorrow, I don't give I don't. I don't um, care. Because that's not what I came to in the first place. I'm just there to do my thing and leave. Like I said, I didn't come to Twitter to please people, which if you look at my bio, it's clearly stated there. If you don't like what I do, or you think that I have a very negative identity or a very negative persona that you cannot vibe with, use the block. It's as simple as ABC. I don't care if your father is president, if you're a celebrity or non-celebrity. I don't literally give a fuck about you. Once I'm there, I say my time and leave. I do read this comment, funny enough. People think I don't, I, when I make the comment, I mean, I don't, but I read it and I laugh out loud because these people are like, they, what people are saying to me online, I get worse than that offline from people I even know. Some people are like, oh, you are, you are so useless. Even from my comment, from people make some kind of negative comment, they make it in forms of joke. Ah, this one will be, they will not get sense. Those kind of things. I'm like, oh, they, so as I see, I'm used to like the hate trend right now. So when you are coming to me and like, you are a, a stupid person, weary or dead, you don't have a future, you will not make anything out, out of it, out of, you won't make anything in life. And I'm like, oh, okay, fine, you're not even to say it, you're just addition to the collection of hate that I have. So welcome, jump on board, but you're not going to stop me. And what people don't understand is the more you give me that negative energy, the more you help me grow my brand, because the negativity is creating attraction for me. People don't understand. So you're indirectly promoting my brand for me without me doing anything. I just have to drop a tweet and leave, and you just do the work for me. So it's free prior, so why would I hate free prior? Hmm. So that's how it works. And I, so they are going to a point now where people are now trying to like, um, would I say emulate? They're trying to like create that regular persona. But it's not there because it's not fit. You can't be what you don't, you can't be who you are not, and you can't give out what you don't have. It's as simple as ABC. So my persona online is if you're coming for me, feel free. I won't block you. I won't engage you. If I should engage you, it's maybe because I just want to set you up straight. I won't engage you because I'm pained or something. You know what I've been to Boarding House, I've seen the hate there. All my life I've been hated. So when you come to me and bring this kind of negative energy to me, I'm like, okay, fine. Thank you very much. You're giving me the personal, you're, giving me the, you're helping my brand grow. You're helping my brand grow. So thank you. Your opinion I've been, I've had your opinion. You can just leave now. Or you can use the blog. And most people use the blog on block, block again. Some literally even make a statement, block you. So why, why would you address me and block me? I can't see your statement if you block me. So if you are confident of yourself or you are feeling it, you can uninstall the app. You can use the blog button, or you can just, I don't know, do anything you want to do with your life. Your personal brand, I don't have a brand with people outside, so that's it. <laughs> in 
initially I didn't have um, an aim for, like I told you, the aim why I came out of all this is my opinion. But um, now that I think that people are looking up to me, few people are looking up to me, at least I know people are looking up to me, they, I've seen it through comments and tweets and the rest of them. I'm not like, um, I would say a public figure, literally a public figure. So now that I've given me the opportunity, I, mean, I have the influence and power, I'm not like, okay, since there are so many youth out there that are kind of misled, they don't have a voice of their own, so many people are so confused at this point in life, they don't know whether kind of confused, that's why like they just jump on any train they see, oh, who's going for president, if this person is popping out, I'll vote for him, that can't think for themselves, and I keep saying every day, you can't think for yourself because you think that the people that are influencing you, because influencers have a lot of power, let's not kid ourselves, influencers have a lot of power, both popular celebrities and non-popular celebrities, they can literally influence you to do things you don't want to do, in names of hashtag, in names of, um, I'm paid for doing your work, so if I, I can, I can, mislead my gullible followers. So the aim I have now with my business, since I have that influencing power, I can use to do some good. I don't matter even if it's one or two people I change, I don't know. I just, can do, I just feel like that's something, something I can do and God's so kind, I'm doing it. And the people are like, okay, tapping each other, this boy's not making sense. There are so many people that were hitting on me for that. Like, oh, I'm trying to see where this boy coming from now. I'm trying to get the point, you understand? So that's just my aim. Just be myself. I'm trying to like bring people to the good side. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to dead all these hate and all these mis people are being misled. Because people are being misled online, seriously. By lots of influencers and celebrities. I've had a bittersweet experience as a Nigerian youth. First of all, I think um, kudos to everyone that is holding down like the social media thing. So we have a lot of things that make us happy online, right? There are people that like bring this energy in terms of crew. So when you see those things, these are things that other countries don't have, and they're trying to tap into Nigeria because we are literally a vibe in this country. So thanks to that. For then, when it comes to the other side, the bitter part of it is that you don't have. As a Nigerian, you literally don't have a future. You you are you have aspirations, you have ambitions, but the government is like killing all your dreams. You want to go into something when you save up for something to do something, you just see the next thing here that full of prices or full of skyrocket, and these things are affecting everything, literally every sector. Then we come back to the security aspect now of, of being a Nigerian youth. You can't. There's a, you have a dress code you have to maintain. You get harassed for almost everything. You style well, you are, you are labeled as a criminal, a fraud. You don't style well, you are labeled as uh, this one is useless, but you don't have any feature. Look at him, he just dealing with useless people and the rest of them. So it's as if like we are just um, hoping that things will get better. And this is the time we are supposed to use 2020. Now with the 23 election at hand, this is the time we have to really sit up and do something about ourselves. And I'm so upset that Nigeria themselves, they are not even serious people. At least 80% of them or 90 are not serious people. They are campaigning for the same people that they went against in the entrance. Because of money, because of gullibility, because of they are naive, or because of influence are pushing them. They are campaigning for them. Many of them are still against themselves. When you when they see you winning, they'll be like, oh, the, why is this guy popping? Why is this a useless person? So you are literally dragging the same people you are praying that you are saying that government is like um, limiting our, our growth and whatever. And you are, you are equally limiting people's growth. On platforms, on different, you talk against people, you bring up people shine. When you see people, for example, when you see people go through bad news, like oh, this person, you have arrested this person, alleged, alleged, right? These people go, I knew he was a criminal. All those people are not fake. You are not even sure of yourself, but you come out and be like, government, you are against us. We are you against your own brother. You don't even want your own fellow you to. But when you see young uh, American citizens struggling, ah, this guy has talent. Yes, I like him. He's into crypto and rest of it. So you see the hate stream coming up. So we are ourselves with our own problems. We don't like ourselves in this country, first of all. We don't like ourselves. Minus tribalism, minus the religious discrimination, we don't like ourselves as youths, as PRC people. We don't like ourselves. We are not united at all. This is, which is what the government is doing against us right now. The government is playing a very big role in like destabilizing the country and like limiting people's growth. Mm. The government is playing a very big role in it. They are just, I don't know, well, I would just say that like, um, but they don't care because they have the money, their loved ones are not here, so they don't have anything to lose. But we ourselves, we have a lot of things to lose. And most influencers, I'm going to come back to influencers again. Most influencers that are out there using their platforms, I don't want to call names, using their platforms to promote these um, incompetent leaders. They know themselves, you don't have to call them. They know they're incompetent. These incompetent leaders, most of them have accumulated so much wealth that after the election, they can fly out. Yeah. You know that it's supposed you casting your one foot, that don't, you, you one foot you've managed to hustle. They are not giving voting for some because five thousand of us and and um Korea they said this or they said this, you voted. After the election you will suffer hmm. for under eight years. Your first will be there catching crews, buying cars, living lavish, you'll be there begging for giveaway all your life for under eight years. So that's it. Then coming back to the um, NSAS protest, I was initially thinking that the NSAS protest were like, okay, Nigerians have woken up, you understand? But at the end of the protest I noticed that Nigerian people are not still we are still the same 
one-minded gullible people we still are because the answers protest at the point it got first of all i need to that one, i believe that was the government propaganda so like destabilize everything like release um the red palette for hitting so people can rush and come and pick up palette and so and Nigeria people just forgot their senses immediately on in the, in the spot. Oh, even my neighbor was like, oh, um, they don't put on sea rice for you. Oh, what did they wait for? Rush. Yes, as have cancelled for that day. <laughs> so they were there, they were hosting rice. Oh yeah, they didn't even care. I was like, SS day this week, go. I said, I to say, make a house rice first. Not much brand of rice. Is that kind of So government really played into we played into government's hand, they got it. And since that time, we have been disabled. As in, if we cannot unite to push something as serious as answers. That's the end. That is just a, 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 an example that we are not. We can't do anything as a people. We are not redeemable. We are not. No, we are redeemable. We are redeemable, but we are not at that place that where we can say, well, like most people are not thinkers. They don't think for themselves. They are like, oh, uh, they have this um, f um, fear of missing out, FOMO syndrome. FOMO. I don't want to miss out. This thing is popping now. I want to have this bag of fries. I must get this bag of fries now. My mate is that means because you don't want to be like, oh, I, I have a bag of fries. Let's do right now. One cup, one fifty. You want buy that? Don't kind of. Um, Mentality. We don't think of long term. We think of now. Now, yeah. let me take. Let me get this money now. Let me get this now and leave. That's the problem. And government do that. Oh, this what they can. What government ability to um, control us as a person, or as a people, is this poverty mentality. This hunger. That means this hunger to feed on us for a very long time. Eight years. Time for election. Share ten thousand out to these people. They will cast votes. Actually, they will cast votes. Hmm. All this coming online and this one for president. Uh, we are waking. We do all that. Hmm. All those things are just clouds. People are not serious. Look at the, the election, they shed 5,000. People even used to bold enough to like 5,000. Woo! Cash out! How, how much 5,000? You see, so that is the problem with Nigeria. So we are not serious. Answer was supposed to be a time for us to like wake up. That energy, that energy of answer, people were dying. Where is the energy now? It's gone. We are just trying to come in line to like our. Most people are just looking for presidential candidates to get that clout. Nothing more. They are not serious. Many of them have PVC. I can sh I can show that many of them have PVC. Those that have PVC will not hesitate to sell it on voting ground. Fifteen thousand piam. My vote not count. That is the idea. I vote on the So why, why am I selling my vote? Then influencers are also coming up. The same influencers that that push this answers of a thing. That is people now voting for this. I don't want to call names. Voting for people that are not. Oh, these are people who were like, eh, it's always okay. Gone. Money don't enter pocket. Anyway, be left face. More cash out this money now. We don't have to move it. So you see the problem. Influencers are doing the work behind closed doors. Youth are not united publicly. So I don't understand. So I'm not even serious. So the answer is like practically a joke now. Those that died, died for nothing. Huh. Those that are trying to speak up now are just trying to speak up maybe to maintain a persona or maintain their credibility or just speaking out just because they still feel like there's, there's, they, they can um, make it, a change happen. But I don't think that's going to happen. But let's just hope that the 20 election, people's sense will be awoken. Huh. So let's just see. We just hope for the best. But the answer has to me is just a waste. Exactly. Literally a waste. Nothing more. Smoking is dangerous for the health. And I know everyone knows that. Even those that are just trying to deny themselves, deny it for themselves, they're just living a life. They're, they're living in this um, bubble where they think like, I think it gives me that cool swag. And I think celebrities know that these things they're doing are not right. First of all, they're not right. But they're still pushing it because Nigeria have perceived this idea that, or let me say the world as a whole, have perceived this idea that smoking is like, it gives you that energy that, like, oh yeah, you are the nigger, you, you, you are the man. It gives you this upper edge, right? Smoking doesn't make any sense. And I keep telling people, celebrity or not, Bona, Whiskey, TJ or Moria, whatever, these things are not making you look any cool. They're actually like depreciating your words, your value. Because when someone like a parent, now there's no reasonable parent that will come out and be watching a music video and see that someone like, oh, they, they, why? Some parents are against it. Oh, why? Which video they supposed to come up and I, it doesn't make any sense, you understand? And they know these things, they know, but they keep pushing it because they're trying to, they keep pushing it because they're trying to push an agenda. And you can take a picture without holding a cigarette. You can do those things behind clothes and no one gives a fuck about your lifestyle. But when you come online, you're supposed to promote good morals. At least try to promote good morals. You have people looking up to you, you have siblings. How will you feel if your child of eight years old now is coming out to smoke? And be like, I learned it from so person. Don't make any sense. And most of these celebrities don't know, but the smoking makes them look older. And I tell them all the time, you look older, your, your, your immune system is not functioning fine, you have to check yourself, you have to nourish your body. So when I tell them these things, not as if I'm coming from a place of hate, I'm telling you because that's how it's supposed to be. Maybe your fans want to tell you because they're afraid of, oh, I idolize you. I don't idolize you, I like your music and that's it. But I will not see you doing rubbish and I'll be like, oh, okay, this person, let me pass for him. First of all, I want to say I respect T. Joe Mori, I respect what, do, what he does, because being a director is not easy. I think people put in a lot of work. And I think he has put a lot of work to get to where he is now. 
Then coming back to the Bugai video, I think most people got it wrong, him himself included. Um, when I said the video doesn't like match the energy of the song, I don't mean that the, the song, the video was whack. The video is below average to me. Personally, the video is below average. I don't see the energy. It doesn't align with what he was trying to portray in the music. The music was supposed to be like, if everyone's supposed to be included. Rich, poor, all social class. It, 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 it was like, whatever you are doing, from what I expect, I think whatever you are doing, be happy about it, go out there, get your money. I don't see it in the video. The video was literally portraying a carnival and it was only centered on like people that are just partying. There's no, and if you watch some of the videos, you will see that um, where does the landlord and the tenant come in? Where does Sabino come in? It doesn't make any sense to me. You understand? If you look at the um, videos of Flavor and Anijeli, you will see that, okay, they were not trying to um, um, move the whole continent, but what they were trying to do, they, they perfect, they, they, whoever directed the video perfected it because you can see the Igbo culture being presented, represented well. It was rich, the music aligned with the audio, the song itself. Buga didn't have that vibe. And I think Tijomori knows the vlog didn't have that vibe, but he's trying to like, um, he was trying to be like unnecessarily defensive because maybe he thinks he's up there, nobody can talk to him, he's all this, he has worked so hard, and the rest of them. And when I come for when I came for him, I didn't come for him in like, I want to shade you, I want to get class from it. I was like, okay, you tried, the video was good, but the video was still whack to me. These rich people are manipulating the crypto market and they're still doing it now. Elon Musk can just come out and be like, oh my god, I want to, um, Tesla will not um, accept um, Dogecoin again and instantly Tesla and, and Dogecoin will lose its value. Um, 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 Jack may come out and be like, oh, let's hide this, let's hide that. Because people believe that when these rich people advertise something, it means there's a value in it. Which Elon Musk knows. Which is the same thing Binance is trying to do now. Try to use them popular influencers and skit makers and celebrities to push up the bank culture that Binance have lost its value. They try to lost its value. So I think Elon Musk is like, um, I think he's a self-centered person. And I think trying to buy Twitter is just for his own personal agenda. Because I've seen him disrespect other people who have contrary opinion to his. Like when you come out and have a contrary opinion to his, they do, when, the way he addresses you, he addresses you like, oh, you're a nobody. You should not be speaking to me this way because I'm literally above you in everything. You understand? So these are the kind of people that I don't think people should be like, you can idolize them if you want. You're, everybody have their own personal opinion and things that work for them. But I don't think that these are the kind of people that we should be looking up to big time, full time. If you're the most want to do something reasonable, he should use his money and invest in Africa. He's partly an African. You cannot be in, um, investing in, in foreign countries when Africa is literally dying as a continent. Use your money. Invest, you have billions, spend on Africans, do something, do charity, invest in agriculture, that's something like that. You say you want to end world, um, um, world hunger, what have you done about it? Nothing, you just come out and tweet memes all day. So, that, so I, don't, I, don't, I don't go with him, I don't think he's someone I can look up to. Mm. Well, they've done media nothing, what they're doing to know 15 million, right? And I think he got the engagement or the clout he's looking for because Wilma Bank finally endorsed him because of it. But I think, personally, I just don't believe that he gave out the 250 million complete. Or he gave it out, but the money was not disbursed. Get me right. I'm not saying he didn't give out the money. But I feel like it's either he gave out the money and the team didn't disburse it. Or he just used it to chase clout. For two reasons. You can't say they donated 250 million, right? And people who came out to say, oh, thank you, David, I received the money. And not even up to 100 people. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. If you give out 250 million, I expect at least close to 200 people to come out and acknowledge that I've received the money, thank you so very much, and whatever. I didn't see it. I can't, I think I can't have about only eight people. So when I addressed the issue, the fans came and were like, ah, it's not your money, and the rest of them, okay, since I've said it, it's out there. They don't need to engage me again. Now, coming back to the 20 million naira I promised some days back, some weeks back, I think it's making about two months plus now. You said you want to give out 20 million to 20 people, we all applaud you for it. Initially, I said, instead of giving out 20 million to these people online, many of them don't even need the money, to be frank and say, why? Because Many of them, they are, if you give them the money, they won't invest it. They will misuse the money. We know how people think. Why not you go um, and donate to the charity, to like people who need, like, go to hospital, that people are, that need money. These people sell it for fun every day online, but no one engages them because they are not, um, they are not looking for something. You see people come out and please, I'm, I have so, so cancer, I need kidney, donate to me. You have these people donate, or let me be a, a, a popular celeb now, like, engage. And people want to, let me be like, I engage to get, I do something today. You understand? So I'm like, go to um, orphanage homes, do something, go to the street, there are people that need money. There are people that really need money. Not people online. If you, I believe that if you have enough time to come online and solicit for fun, which means you can, you can actually touch somebody, because online is like, somewhere you can just generate quick funds. And people, just, and people are doing all kinds of things. Take money, do rubbish, and leave. 
they will still come back again and beg tomorrow. Mm. You understand? So he came like, I want to give out 20 million to 20 people. I was like, okay, fine. Since you don't want to go with the idea, where is the 20 million for 20 people? Friday has passed repeatedly. You came out the next week. You said you spent some money in a club. We don't want to hear that kind of talk. Bring the 20 million and give it to people. You said you are going to give out 20 million to 20 people. That money is literally peanuts to you because you, this money is, you can spend on, a, on one sitting, maybe in a club or something. What's stopping you from bringing out the money? And people brought out their ideas. They, they cracked their brain to bring out ideas of business. And some even had to bring out ideas that they believe other people can hijack. Why not finance these people? You didn't do anything. You just kept moving on the matter. You still talking about policies and the rest of them. So I think uh, he was using to chase clouds. And sorry enough, most of the fans are still gullible. They still fall for all these kind of things. When celebrities chase clouds with all these fake engagements and fake endorsements and all these things, they don't do it. So that's it. Hey, this is a reputable or uh, a well-recognized award that is supposed to be for Nigerians and Africans alone. If they're going to be any other place, like any other country that is going to be included, they have to come to, they have to recognize Africa as a culture because we're trying to promote Afrobeat now. It's supposed to be the, personally for Afrobeat, first of all. I think that was the original idea. Now, I think that the head of these organizers taking the awards outside the continent doesn't make any sense to me because they are trying to like say that Africa is like inferior. I expect that if you want to take the award outside Nigeria, it should be somewhere like South Africa or Ghana. There are things that are, if you say Nigeria is not safe, other countries are not safe. Forget that the media is trying to hype like foreign country. You see shootings every day every, in, around the globe. So I think them bringing the award, out, taking the award outside Nigeria, don't make sense to me that, that like devaluing Nigerian artists, first of all, that are showing that we don't have what it takes to hold an award here. It's just like telling Grammy organizers to like bring your Grammy and, and, and this thing to South Africa or Nigeria because people in Nigeria cannot go to um, 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 their, wherever location that are holding the award. So for them to take the award out of Nigeria in the first place to um, outside the continent is a very big disrespect to Afro Afrobeat artists, a very big disrespect to Africans as a whole, and it means that our industry here is not well recognized, that we do not appreciate us. And we can't keep saying that um, white people are not giving us the uh, acknowledgement we deserve when we don't appreciate ourselves, when we keep devaluing ourselves. Do you understand? So, the organizers are al already tarnishing the brand. Because right now, Hedis have very little influence. It's not, it's no longer making sense anymore. Because first of all, the awards are won by favoritism. You hardly give people that are credible. You hardly see people like Kiss Daniel entering the Hedis nomination list. Despite being the fact that one of the most popping and lyrically talented artists these days. You see them giving it to all these overrated um, artists, maybe people because based on they have fans that have influence over the board, rest of them. So here is taking that award outside Nigeria is a very, very, very lame decision to me. A very lame decision. And by the time they, they want, when they do this the first time, the second time when you tell other people now the, the, the award is going to be held in Nigeria, you tell people say, why they can't bring and come back to Nigeria? Why not we just go to abroad again the second time? Anyone that respect the headies should come to Nigeria and pick up the award. It's as simple as that. When Grammys hold the Grammys hold the award on the moon, Nigeria has to go to the moon to pick the award because they respect Grammys to that extent that they, they, they can literally push all their engagement or push um, make out time for it, no matter how busy they are. So why can't they do the same thing for our uh, um, headies awards? So I think the headies award they have to re um, rethink and maybe trend on the right order. Right now they're going astray and they're making the headies look like a big joke. My favorite um, Nollywood actors or actresses together, I think I'm going to go for people I really enjoy. I, a little joke is going to be there. It's an icon, a literal icon. Um, Patience Suzuko. Um, Mercy Johnson, one of my favorite actresses. She can kill any role without thinking twice. Then um, I would just go for Aki and Papa. I don't know their full names or their real names. I know Osita or something like that, but Aki and Papa are there. Then Kanayo, Kanayo. Well, like one of the people, like when you look at Kanye, Kanye, this movie is going to be interesting, you know, based on his sacrifice, sacrificial things he does on, the, uh, on this day. Then I would still go with Pete Duce. He's still one person I would go with if I'm to include one other person, Pete Duce. Those are, my, those are the icons I like. These are people that have done something, and you can see that they're still impacting even when, when they barely act these days. That's what I'm going to go for. My favorite skit making are just making and content creators are just um, macaroni macaroni and um uh, marachi Ma macaroni because i think he's one of the very is if not the only active uh, comedian right now that is trying to mix um skit making and activism together like he creates these kids 
initially he was doing some regular kind of comedy before but now he's like taking it a step further he's doing something that you can say okay you are you are watching the comedy right you're getting the vibe you're getting the entertainment but you're also passing the message you see him talking about using things to adjust it like answers political rivalry um trying to put an end to social discrimination visual discrimination you see those things so that, that what I, those, those are what i called um content creators that's the kind of thing i want to be seen and that was why I addressed the African Magic Real Stress Award when I said um, Sabine doing this habit. When I was coming from, I won't, I won't say that Sabine have not done something. Sabine have done something with his skit. He has made them for himself. Obviously, he does some skit that please some people. I still find some of his skits um, hilarious, but you can't give um, an award to someone who just does regular skit when there are people who are really putting out the work out there. Comedy is not just to come out and kick, 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 kick. Everyone can just do comedy, right? Sabine um, Macron have done something that is beyond comedy. You can see him actually influencing people, and which is why. The government is, so part of the government is coming for him now. You can see that they are just they're like against him. So you are, give credit to who credit is due. Give Macaroni his deserved flowers. He has done something beyond regular comedy making. Then coming to Maraji, I like Maraji because she uses um, our everyday life to make comedy. Like when you see people reacting to different ways of being in the exam hall, different ways of um, dancing. You see people, sometimes when I see that, oh, this is me, she's trying to represent me. So that's what I see. She's doing it effortlessly without even like trying to put in all the energy to it. It's just like what we do every day. Our different reaction, different people with a different personality. So she's trying to like merge it together to be a comedy, to, into comedy. So that's why I say I'm going for her too. Those are the only two people I raise. I like, I say I, I vibe with their comedy, skit and whatever. I still respect the, the others, but I don't just like read them the way I read these two. Hi guys, uh, my name is Daniel Rega. Obviously, you guys know me from Twitter, a very popular, I can't which a problematic person. Um, shout out to News Around the Clock. You can literally follow them on all platforms. I'm here hosting, I'm holding an interview. It's been a pleasure being here. I really enjoyed my time here. So thank you to News Around the Clock. Um, thank you to the organizers and um, the people behind the camera. Love you guys so much. Thank you.